Okay, in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can uh, point your domain name to your EC2 instance. And at the same time, I'm going to talk about virtual hosts, creating multiple websites on the same machine. Uh, so the very first thing I want to introduce you is, is uh, the uh, name chip uh, for education uh, is a registrar that uh, gives free domain uh, to the student uh, with the .me extension for one year. So if your institution is less uh, in their website, like if they have their uh, college or university uh, domain uh, listed in the site, simply you can apply if you're a student, of course, and you can keep that domain for one year for free, which helps you actually to interact with your server through the domain name. Uh, now, uh, in order for me to be able to uh, match or to uh, uh, use a domain name to access my EC2, I, I've got to go ahead to the uh, uh, sign up to my uh, account on their uh, website. Uh, and this is very similar for any other registrar as well. Uh, so uh, my domain name is listed right here. I'll click on manage. And uh, I will go simply on advanced DNS. This is where you have to go uh, to uh, apply the changes. Now, uh, I have already done this uh, because uh, usually updating DNS would take uh, from one hour to 72 hours, really. Uh, so what you have to do is uh, the instance that you have, like in my case, I had the uh, instance uh, IP address and the DNS, whichever you like, you can use. So you can either use the IP or you can use the DNS. There are two ways of doing this. When you come here, if you can see there is an A record here, uh, simply this A record must change to the IP address that you have for your machine. If you like, uh, you can also use the DNS and you can change this into a C name, C name record, and here, you can actually use uh, the public DNS provided to you by Amazon. So if you do this one as well, it's gonna work as well. So you just have to go ahead and update these two pieces of information to be able to access it, right? So as far as this goes, now if I go ahead and type my domain name, which is com2144.me, I can simply access my website uh, using the domain. So I don't need uh, any more of the uh, IP address access, right? So next, I want to show you how to make virtual hosts. Usually when you have a server, you can uh, host multiple websites on the same server. There are two ways of doing this. We call it name-based and IP-based virtual hosts. Again, virtual host is a container that can contain many of the Apache directives in. Uh, the, so I'll, I'll go through that right now to create one. So definitely I need my config file, and as you remember, we installed the Apache web server on USR local Apache 2, and the configuration file or httpd.config inside the config folder, right? Let me just do ls minus ls, you can see it one more time. I made a backup of httpd.config file in case if I make a mistake, I can have that one again. So what I do is I'll make another one, uh, and dk1, for instance, so I have two versions right now. Later on, you can get right of the old version if you don't need to. Uh, so I'm going to open the HTTP config, and uh, I'll go all the way to the end of the file. This is one way of doing it. Uh, so what I do is I start adding a directive. Let me just bring this one up so you can see it better. So here I will go and say virtual host any IP 80. So this is. IP-based virtual host. Virtual host. I think I typed it wrong. Let me see here. Virtual host. Yes. Virtual host. Here you go. So I created the container. Um, of course, uh, first I have to s I have to go ahead and say what is the server name. So I have to say this is a domain name that will point to this uh, to this uh, virtual host. So I'll go and use the server name directive, and I will simply say I'll call it site one dot comp twenty one forty four dot me. 
So that's it. that's a that's a domain that will point to this virtual host. Now it's not necessary uh, to be a subdomain of the main domain. It can be any other domain. Doesn't really matter. But since I want to show uh, the value here uh, to you, because I have only one domain, I want you to see how it works. Now uh, here I can also have a server LDS. Server LDS is uh, uh, you you can. You can host the server and you can have multiple uh, domain pointing to this uh, server as well. So I can go ahead and say uh, server LES if I want to, uh, with whatever it is. Like in this case, it doesn't make sense, but if there are any other domain, I could go and say anything that comes to this domain, come2144.me redirect here, or some other, some other things here as well too. We're not going to use the server release here for now, but definitely if we are building a site, we have to know where the document root is, where is the public folder. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and use the document root directive, document root directive, and I will say, okay, I want to create uh, inside the wall folder, www, I want to go ahead and uh, create a folder like this, right? So uh, I want to go ahead and create a new folder structure in uh, war ww site and hd docs right so let's go let's go ahead save this file uh restart the server definitely right and see what's going on so i'll go to the bin restart the server it's complaining that document root that i specify does not exist so this means i have to go and create the directory so I'll go ahead war ww i don't have such thing site one uh, hd docs right uh, oh, make directory, sorry. And there you are. There you go. No such file directory. So I can go ahead and force this by adding dash p, I believe. Yes, okay. So now that I created this, uh, I restarted the server. Let's do it one more time to just make sure everything is okay. There you go. Oh, well, still it says it doesn't exist. How come? Um, oh, I made a mistake. Uh, I'll call it site one here, but in the config file, I call it site. Let, let's fix the, fix the configuration file. So I'll go to where I have this, and I just simply go ahead and change this to site one. Okay, that should be it. Let's go ahead and restart the server. Everything should be okay. Now, what I need to do is I need to update this on the DNS. So I need to go here and add another one. So what I can do is I can go ahead and add an extra record into DNS. So I'll go create a new record here. I'll click on this. I select the A record. Uh, for the A record, uh, the host is site one. And this simply is the same ID as the server because remember this is uh, IP based virtual uh, name, right? So, sorry, it's the name based virtual server, not the IP base. If, if it was IP based, then we had to have uh, individual site had to add their own IP addresses, right? So, we use the same IP for the whole server. We just created the whole site one in this case, and simply uh, it should allow us to access the, uh, the uh, virtual host we just created by using the domain site1.com. 2144.me. Since this might take a little bit time to actually uh, be able to use it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to set this one on my local machine for now, and then uh, when it comes back, I can use it later on. Most of the time, you you really need to manage these things while you're testing the server on your local machine. Uh, so what I can do is I can simply look for Notepad. Uh, I'll open the notepad with the administrator light, so run as the administrator. Uh, accept the link, and uh, you need to open the file. You go open the file, you have to go to uh, Windows, C uh, drive, Windows, System32, Drivers, ETC. If you go to all files, you will see a file called hosts, right? So in the host file, what you can do is you can specify the IP address that you had here. So this is the IP address we use for the domain as well. Uh, let me go back here. So I'll put the IP address and I will put the domain as well. Site.gblearn, uh, sorry, gcomp2144.me, uh, right? So I save this. 
Now, if I go ahead and run this on the browser, I should be able to get this right now. Okay, it gives me forbidden. There are a few changes I have to do in order to make this to work. So let's 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 fix this one, the forbidden issue, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll I'll go back to where I defined the virtual host. Uh, let me just go here, and I will add a directive here that allows me to let people access this directory. So I'll go here, directory, or www, site one, ht docs. Okay, I'll close this container because I'm going to do some more later on. Okay, now here, uh, what we have to write is, we've got to write this directive, require all granted, okay? Now, what this does is, uh, it, it means that everyone is allowed to access this directory, right? So let's go ahead and run this, see if it fixes the error. So as usual, we have to restart the server. I go ahead and run this. Still, I cannot access it. So as you see, I can get a forbidden again. So the reason is that directory is empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go create a file. Uh, I'll go say echo uh, test file. I will redirect the output to war ww site one she docs and I call it index.html. So now if I refresh the page right now, I should be able to see the content. So uh, one of the reasons was because the indexing of the directory is uh, is blocked on the uh, HTTP config by default. So I can simply enable that one and get rid of the index.html as well. So let me go ahead and remove uh, war ww site ht docs index.html so if i try this one more time i should get forbidden there you go so i'm going to fix it now so let me go to the command line open the config file okay so now i can simply go here and add the option directory options so I can say indexes, so let direct index the, the directories, and uh, let me just go ahead and save this, restart the server, okay, and now I should be able to see the index, okay, so there is no file in there, that's why I just see the index. So my virtual, is, my virtual host is ready to go, uh, definitely the, the place that I put this virtual host uh, container is not the right place because if I go to Apache right now and do ls inside the config folder, you will see a folder called extra. That is where you have to have your virtual host. So if I go cd extra and I'll look at these files in here, the one I need is http ehost.config. So if I go and open the ehost, you will see it comes with documentation. It has some central data as well. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment these and bring the virtual host we added to the uh, HTTP config here uh, so we don't touch the HTTP itself after this. So let me just save this file, open the HTTP config, HTTP config. the file let me just go ahead I will copy this for now copy and delete it uh -oh. mistake okay let me just go ahead and delete this save the file go to uh, HTTP host file and definitely I'm going to uh, post this one right here Insert. So I have the whole thing in there. I'll just go ahead and say, definitely I have to restart the server as well. So I go to bin, Apache restart. Okay, I should not see any differences when I refresh the page. Well, I do, because now what happened is the main site and the virtual host conflicts, right? Let me fix that. So I go back to the HTTP config and I'll look for the host and one more okay, 
you see that virtual host I just have to uncomment this otherwise it would ignore the virtual host which is in a separate file and it will run the main file so I'm going to save the file definitely I'm gonna go restart the server Let's see if I can find the command here yes if I go and try this this should be okay uh, I just checked uh, I use the uh, uh, dig web interface for the domain and as I can check the IP are both pointing to the same machine so I don't really need this in my file anymore I can just get rid of this and still if I go to the uh, site with the domain I should be able to access it with the actual domain I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you for watching